So this video is a fully impromptu, no scripted video because I've been dealing with uh, snowstorms and blackouts recently, which have prevented me from getting my fully edited video out on time. So instead, we're going to be dealing with an imp impromptu video on how to deal with stressful situations in Vermintide. I did think about uh, titling this as how to deal with clutch situations in Vermintide, but the problem I found with that is that there are so many variables and different situations you can find yourself in in a clutch situation that even if we were to sit here and go over a thousand different examples, it still wouldn't help you, really, if you were to watch every single example and then get into your own clutch situation. So instead, we're just going to be blanket covering how to deal with stress and stressful situations in Vermintide. So I'll be going over a couple of tips on how to deal with that, a couple of points, as well as just a couple of miscellaneous tips as I think of them. And uh, yeah, to set the scene right here, we're playing on against the grain. We're playing on 200% Twitch mode, which means that enemies spawn uh, double. So if normally 10 enemies spawn, instead 20 enemies are going to spawn. And instead of only one boss spawning, two bosses will spawn. So right now we have three bosses up. We have this rat ogre here. There's a rat ogre obscured by my mace. Uh, those two spawn from Twitch mode. And then we have a storm fiend uh, with a shade, I believe. And he came from the barn. And yeah, right now we are pl we're playing with a Battle Wizard, Ranger, Vet, and Shade. Unfortunately, the Battle Wizard is currently dead. But um, right now we have both the uh, Shade and the Ranger Vet. And right now, both the Ranger Vet and the Shade have both invised. So I know I need to be very, very careful. Now, something that you just want to keep in mind is if you're playing with a fully invis group and you're playing a non-invis character, you always need to be aware of when they're going to go invisible. You cannot sit there and blame your team for invis for going invisible and then you dying that is your responsibility to pay attention to when they invis and that is your responsibility to make sure you don't die when they drop aggro so right he right here i'm just uh kiting i'm just keeping this router busy and immediately the shade goes down and this is where i want to make my first point the first point i want to make is you have to learn to trust your team now, I understand this is difficult if you're playing with people that you don't know or you're playing with people that you really can't trust, but in situations like these and just in general, you have to understand you're only one person and you can't do absolutely everything. You can't be everywhere at once. So you need to learn to relinquish some control to your team and trust that your team is going to take care of it. Now, right here, I was trusting. I did not plan to go for the shade. I was trusting that the ranger vet would instead go for the shade. So I, I was content to just sit here and dodge dance this Red Ogre as long as I needed to until the Ranger Vet got the shade up. Now, as you can see, uh, he actually doesn't do that. He starts running to me for some reason. So uh, I realize that I actually need to go for this. So what I do is I, I start trying to dodge dance the Red Ogre over there. I eat an overhead, which is actually good in the situation because I need to get my ult up. So then I start booking it to the shade. And then I have a little fluke, but I do end up getting her up. And then at this point, it's just back to kiting uh, some of them. Now, right here, we have uh, Pestilent Hems. Pestilent Hems is a monk spawn. Remember, this is 200% Twitch, so double monks have spawned. Which means, uh, as you can see here in a second, there are a bunch of monks. That's not all of them. Yeah, there's a... Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's monks right here, there's monks over there, and there's monks over there. There's a bunch of monks. And this is where I want to make my second point. Stay calm. Uh, don't panic. And if you've already pa started panicking, calm down. Uh, of course, if you're panicking, if you're shaking, if you're, you know, telling yourself you can't do it, then you're not going to be able to do it. So you need to take a breath. Even if you just need to sit there and block and then just press space every once in a while, just take a deep breath, calm down, and focus. We all know monks are scary. We all know monks can just delete you off the face of this earth. But you need to just be able to take a chill pill and calm down because if you're panicking you're not going to be able to make smart decisions and i know that's easier said than done and that'll just come with practice so right here you're just going to see me just kind of like block and then every once in a while I'll just use my uh, mouse wand to try to get some damage in i'm not trying to go for anything fancy i'm not trying to do any massive damage i'm just trying to get a little bit of damage in and right here you see me get stuck so i immediately decide to break off from the ranger veteran and at this point I have both bosses on me and monks, so right here, I'm just focused on blocking and not trying to die. Right here, I see both of those uh, red ogres go for the ranger vet, so I try to pull one off. And then, unfortunately, the ranger vet just keels over dead. So, uh, and this is where I would like to make my third point real quickly. Uh, the third point I want to make is that, especially in a situation like this where it's just uh, 
two of you, uh, just stay alive through any means necessary. At this point, even if I were to just hold block and do absolutely nothing except kite these two rat ogres around, I would be 10 times more useful to this shade than if I were to try to get some damage in and just die and leave her alone. You are always, 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 always more beneficial to your teammate who you're with when if you are alive and doing no damage than if you try to do some damage and you die. So uh, no matter what, the number one thing you need to do is just stay alive. And uh, a little something about this is if you have two bosses like this inside of each other and they do this, they're actually hurting each other. You can't really see it through the bar right here, but when bosses like do these attacks onto each other, they're actually hurting each other. So in, in this kind of situation, when you have two, two bosses chasing you and they're inside of each other, you yourself, you don't got to do anything. All you have to do is just sit there and block and the bosses overheading each other and hitting each other, they're going to be hurting each other for you. So at that point, you don't even need to risk yourself or risk your life. All you got to do is just block, and they're going to do the damage for you. So right here, um, Red Ogres get off Shade. I decide to shout to get them back onto me because I want her to be able to get as much damage as possible. She ends up pulling one, which is good. And right here, this is back where I say I just need to stay alive. Now right here, I'm just dodge dancing to do as much damage as I can because I want to point out something else right here with Twitch Moat. Uh, there, the, these two boats right here, there's heavy metal and there's mass tingling thorns. Heavy metal is an armored chaos warrior spawn. It'll spawn a bunch of chaos warriors. Uh, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about mass tangling thorns. If you don't know what mass tangling thorns is, it's a twitch vote that prevents you from moving for the entire duration. You cannot move. You cannot dodge. You cannot dash. You cannot do anything. Um, now... Technically, if you were to crouch, you could walk around really, really slow, but that's not going to help you to avoid eating an overhead. So right here, I realized that we need to kill this Radogor as fast as possible, or we need to kill these Radogors as fast as possible. Otherwise, we're going to wipe. So, which is why I decide to start doing the dodge dance. Oops. I start dodge dancing to get as much damage as possible. Now, I do want to reiterate, if you're not comfortable dodge dancing like this and you can't do this, it is still... 10 times more useful to just sit here, block, and do nothing, and stay alive for this shade than try to get some damage in and die. So the shade right there does end up killing the Rat Ogre, so I, try, I'm tr I start trying to lead the Rat Ogre back towards her. She gets there, and she starts doing the damage. I, we only have 25 seconds. I, I'm watching my shout, and I immediately shout as it gets up so that it gets back off of her and she can keep doing damage. And then with about 15 seconds left to spare, we kill the final Rat Ogre. So the second video we have here is we are playing with the same group, this time on the pit, still 200% Twitch. We currently have one Chaos spawn up, and we uh, also have um, double Disabler votes right here. Remember, this is 200% Twitch, so no matter what, we're about to have a bunch of Disabler spawn. And I realize that. Uh, something else that I also want to point out is that we also had a... It's kind of hard to see... Uh, we also had a um, loot rat spawn, so there are a bunch of supplies on the ground for us to use freely. That is something to definitely, definitely keep in mind. So right here, the uh, the pack rats the pack rat spawn. Unfortunately, it's not uh, leeches, which would have been easier to deal with. So I immediately start booking my way backwards because I want to I want to go backwards. I don't want to be out in the open. I want to go backwards into this house behind me so I can put my back up against something. Uh, especially when you're dealing with a bunch of disablers like this at once, you don't want to be out in the open because the disablers could come up from this way. They could come up from this way. They could come up here. They could come up here. They could come up here. They could come over here. They could come down here. They could come probably come down here. There's there's so many different ways they can come and ambush you. And if you're unlucky, you're going to have three or four attack you at the same time from all different directions. And you're just going to die. So, uh, you want to get your back to something, so I start pushing back to the house so I can get my back up against something. So, uh, I try to start killing some of these, uh, Packmasters as much as I can, and I bomb it. I, I know that we have a bunch of bombs, so I just decide to immediately bomb it. I have my shout, which I was saving specifically for if the Ranger Vet got grabbed, and as you can see, he did get grabbed, so I shouted to save him. We still have a shit ton of, uh, Pack Rats coming. 
and uh, we unfortunately get grabbed, or we get uh, cut off, but I'm, I was able to free myself, and the Ranger Vet and I are able to free ourselves through some fucking miracle. And at this point, my job is, I, I see that over here, I see, uh, it, it's, he's kind of obscured, you can't really see him, but behind this post, the Ranger Vet has the Chaos Spawn, which means my job in this moment is to kill the rest of the Sablers. So that is my job. So I am currently doing my job in killing the Sablers, which I do. There's only two left. And with that, the Ranger Vet kills the Chaos Spawn and we're okay. However, we're not out of the clear because we have another boss spawn incoming. So after I kill these two rats, I'm actually going to start healing, even though I'm not that hurt. And this is where I want to make my next point. Uh, use your resources. So many times, th the biggest thing that I see in this game is people constantly die without ever using their resources. Uh, if you're in a situation where it's just you by yourself or you with one other person, and you have a potion, a healing, a bomb, use it. Especially if you have a bunch of these on the ground, just start chunking bombs. You you have so many of them to use, and you could very easily save yourself from an unsavable situation if you were just to chuck a bomb or drink a potion. Now, um, I heard something many, many years ago. I think JSAT said it. Um, I'm probably going to butcher this, but he said something along the lines of, if you die with uh, supplies in your inventory, you definitely messed up. But if you died without any supplies in your inventory because you used them all, then there is a chance that you didn't mess up. And uh, essentially what he means by that is that if you die with supplies in your inventory, there is a very good chance you could have prevented that death had you used your supplies, had you drank that potion, had you used that bomb, had you healed yourself beforehand. But um, if you had used everything and you still died, then there is a chance that the game just decided you, you're fucking dead and there's nothing you could have done about it, no matter if you used your supplies or not. So always, 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 always use your supplies if you need them. Even if you don't think you need them, sometimes it's better just to use them because you might surprise yourself. So right here, I am praying to Sigmar that we get a troll instead of a minotaur because a troll is going to be much easier to deal with. And thank God someone votes troll. <coughs> now, I actually think we're on 150% Twitch instead of 200. I can't really remember, but... uh. Yeah, so uh, I see that the ranger vet has once more picked up the troll, so I go to kill the Blightstormer. And uh, unfortunately, immediately the ranger vet gets grabbed by a leech. And I am able to free him, but then he instantly dies. And after hearing that assassin spawn and knowing that there's still a leech up, I know that I don't... I can't get him, so I need to push up to start getting the res. So I kill the assassin, I dodge the leech, and I start making my way towards the res. With the shade who is right here. There is a rattling right there, which is unfortunate, but I am able to, uh, I'm able to get the res, I'm able to shout to save myself from the leech, and I bomb right there to save the shade. Now, this is where, I, I'm gonna go back a little bit. This is where another point is good to be made. Uh, that bomb. This bomb right here, uh, shade, shade had her ult up right there. Uh, that bomb wasn't really necessary in the moment. It was nice, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't really necessary in the moment because uh, I had done it to save the shade, but what I didn't realize at the time was that the shade had her ult up. So that bomb wasn't necessary. And this is where another point I could make, uh, I, I want to make is uh, think fast and stick with uh, whatever you decide to do. Um... Sometimes you may realize uh, halfway through something that the idea that you had, you know, wasn't really necessary or might not be the greatest idea, but you don't always have the time to go back and retcon what you, what you decided to do, and you don't always have the time to uh, stop, you know, to put away that potion or to uh, uh, stop throwing that bomb or to stop healing yourself. You just need to do it. So think fast and just follow through with what you're doing. That, that, that is my next uh, yeah. Anyway. So I hop over here to kill the Rattling. And then I start trying to fight my way back down towards the shade so we can be kind of close together. 
And I see the leech right there, but unfortunately the troll drops and animation cancels himself and almost kills me, but I drop down to heal myself, which is why I go back to the user resources. I saw I was injured, I saw a chance to take that I could heal, and I took it. And immediately, we have more rat ogres. So all of a sudden, everything has just gone to hell in a handbasket. So this is once more, stay calm, don't panic. Uh, right now, my job is to kill the, is to kite the rat ogre, but then everyone unfortunately goes down. So I know my job now is to get to the ranger vet to res him. So I'm going to do that by any means necessary. I am definitely, I'm paying attention at all costs. I am uh, listening for any spawns. I am trying to pay attention to where things are. I am taking uh, another thing uh, you can see right here. Uh, let me go back. Uh, I take a really weird path right here. Because uh, I, I jump from this platform. I, I jump from here to here and then go down. Mainly because I want the AI to also take weird paths so that they can take longer to get to me. Which means I have more time to get to where I need to be. And uh, if I were to sit there and if I were just to have, you know, dropped uh, the... Whoever, the rat ogre behind me would have just dropped behind me and been on me immediately. I also would have taken damage. But by taking this really weird path, by jumping and then moving and then dropping down and then zigzagging and doing whatever, uh, I cause the AI to also take weird paths sometimes. It doesn't always work. Keep that in mind. It doesn't always work. They don't always take weird paths. But sometimes they'll kind of freak out and they'll take a weird path as well, which buys you extra time to get to the location that you need to go to. So that is something you should also keep in mind. Take weird paths. We know that right there, I'm able to bait the Radogar into an attack. So he doesn't uh, overhead me. And right here, I make another uh, decision that I stick to. I start to kill the Blightstormer, but then I decide, you know, he's actually probably going to be helpful to me. So I'm not going to kill him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep him alive. I hear an assassin. But uh, my, uh, my number one priority is to get the Ranger better, better and up, so I do. He invises. Remember what I said. It is my responsibility to stay alive whenever my friends invis. So I hear him invis. I know I'm on my own. So which means I'm not going to stay near him. I'm going to leave. Because I know that all the bosses, all the Stormbermen, all the rats, and the Assassin's coming for me. And right there, there's the Assassin. And I'm able to kill him. And right here, I, I don't know if I need to drink this potion necessarily, but I do it just in case. And uh, I'm shoved into this corner by the by the storm and the flamethrower. Now, right now, I'm perfectly safe. I'm fine. The storm's not going to get to me. I'm okay. And then, gas. And at that point, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do about that. And that's where I want to make my uh, last point. Uh... In these kind of situations, in these stressful situations, just just accept that you're sometimes going to die. Sometimes the game gives you a middle finger and says, fuck you, and there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, obviously, you should always be looking to improve yourself, and you should always be looking to uh, improve your gameplay, uh, see where you went wrong, see what you did wrong, see how you could have played that situation better. But do understand that in a game like Vermintide, where there are just so many enemies at once, just understand that sometimes the game throws you a curveball and the AI director throws so much shit at you that there's nothing you can do except die. So always, always keep that in mind. And with that, that is the second video. All right, and lastly, we have another Twitch game on Convocation of Decay. Uh, we are not playing with the same group. We are playing actually with Moop Shark, and we're playing uh, with some of my other friends. Um, and some of his friends as well. And I don't think this is 200% Twitch. I think this is just 150. But uh, also keep in mind, we are playing on a deed as well as Twitch mode. We are playing on Send the Next Wave, which is increased horde spawns. And we are also playing on Sudden Death, which means that if you go down, you instantly die. There is no down state. So with that in mind, uh, also, we have just had a Berserker vote, which means there are a bunch of Chaos Berserkers around. And as you're going to hear right now... Ladder! 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 <laughs> that never gets old. Uh, Moop gets stuck on a ladder and he fucking dies. <laughs> Moop is gone. So it's just me and the Sienna. So the first thing that I do is I stay calm and I immediately say to myself, I need to get to this uh, to this Unchained. Because both I'm playing Kruber, I'm playing Mercenary Kruber with a shout. 
and she is playing uh, Unchained with the um, AoE uh, fire ult, which means we both have pretty good AoE, so we need to get to each other immediately. Plus, we're also about to have Boon of Concentration. So I oh it, so God. I just I just sit here and I block. I'm not trying to do any damage. I'm just trying to simply get to her. Because remember, I am ten times more useful if I'm alive and doing no damage than if I am try to do damage and I die. That's stupid. So I shout to kill that leech. And then right there, uh, I realize that we are in a not a great situation. There are berserkers to our right, berserkers behind us. And as you can see right there, the uh, both of us, both the unchained and I ult, or she ults. And then she starts uh, getting, she starts uh, pushing through by herself perfectly fine. As you can see, uh, basically everyone except this guy dies. And I think this guy back here, everyone else dies, which means that that bomb that I just threw, this bomb is kind of useless. But you know what? That goes back to what I was saying. If you do something, if you're, if you're thinking fast in the moment and you do something, just stick with it. As I threw the bomb, I realized that that bomb wasn't very useful, but I didn't have time to put it away, so I just stuck with it, and I threw the bomb. So just keep that in mind. At, at the very least, what that bomb did was give us a guaranteed clear path to get out of there. At the very least. So as you can see, the Unchained right there was deciding to... Another a good part on the Unchained was that she... uh. She just started walking backwards and blocking. She wasn't trying to attack. She was just trying to get to me. Because remember, we're stronger together. And uh, right here, we're just fighting. We're crowd controlling our way through. And remember, this is sending the next wave. So we do not have an end to this horde. Uh, with send in, send in the next wave, the hordes just endlessly come. They're never going to stop. So at some point, the Unchained and I need to find a way to push through. So, uh... The job. Both of us, too. Both of us at the job. Eventually, we find our... Oh, I should go back a little bit. That was too far. So eventually, we start pushing our way through. Uh, we both decide to drop. And right there, I see... I want to go back. Right there, I see that Moop, when Moop died, he dropped a conch pot. So the first thing I do is I drink the conch pot I have. There is no reason in this situation to walk past that conch pot and not drink it. Because no matter what, I, I can see the Unchained. The Unchained over here, she has, oops. The Unchained, she has absolutely full supplies as do I. I, I used my healing already, but I, I have full supplies. And uh, Moop, and Duke over here, they're both down at the drop, so they're never going to see those supplies again. Which means there is no reason for me to not use that potion, to drink that conch potion and start giving us free temp HP. Also keep in mind, I am running Walk It Off right here, which means that as long as I'm shouting, as long as I'm drinking a potion, the Unchained and I take a guaranteed 25% less damage across the board. So like I said, no reason to just walk past that conch pot and not use it in the situation. So at this point, we're just kind of walking backwards. I'm covering her by shouting, giving her a chance to uh, get to me because I don't want her to get caught off guard by that, uh, by that, uh, what's it, warp fire thrower run overheat herself. So I watch her, so uh, I allow her to run while I watch her back and then I drop when it's safe. And then as she goes for Moop, I go for Duke. And uh, as you... And as you can see right there, I unfortunately get interrupted by uh, the Unchained's uh, beam staff, and I start getting uh, barred up again. However, as you can see, the uh, the Blightstorm is doing this weird thing, where sometimes the Blightstorm will be moving towards you, moving towards you as well as expanding, which basically means the Blightstorm gets double the distance on you in half the time. And uh, I knew that if I got Duke up right here, he would have gotten sucked straight into this flight storm and just insta died. So what I do is in the moment, I immediately realize that and I decide to not get him. I decide to drop the res at the last second so I don't end up fucking him over. Because as long as he's inside that blight storm wall down, he's not going to take any damage from that blight storm and no one's, uh, no one's going to be able to get to him. 
Actually, that doesn't matter because he's not down. He's just he needs to be revived. So scratch that. Never mind. But it, I, but now that the Black Stormer is gone, I can safely get him. Thank. And uh, yeah, that's about all that I wanted to share. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more Vermintide content in the future. And hopefully I will catch y'all next time. Peace, y'all.